Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much uh, for having given this opportunity uh, for a, a post-budget uh, speech. I think I have been addressing this uh, ENY post-budget session from 2005. And uh, except in 2009, I have participated in all the uh, budget speech uh, presentations. We miss this time the, the regular present, that is uh, Laknali. Uh, of course, uh, Duminda did uh, excellent presentation, but I must say we missed Laknali. I also want to uh, place a special word of appreciation of her amazing contribution uh, to the uh, reforms, particularly in taxation areas, providing a clarity, a professional conduct in the last several years that I know her in this field, and also one time eminent resource person for us in our taxation cluster and all those good work we remembered very well and I'm delighted she's in the front row this morning uh, though we miss her in our uh, usual uh, uh, presentation uh, desk. So good luck, luck Mary. I'm uh, not going to uh, give the details uh, since uh, Duminda has already uh, outlined the macro uh, story behind the budget, numbers, getting into their own uh, professions by explaining certain areas where clarity is not there, certain er areas where clarity is required, certain areas how these things are done, these will continue to be like this. But we will try to uh, ensure that uh, as far as government is concerned, we'll uh, maintain continuity, consistency, and clarity in our work as much we can, which Nista uh, in his very well uh, maintained uh, Financial Times. Last time gave the headline, and you must repeat that headline until the nation is fully satisfied that clarity, consistency, and continuity is there. That is why, whether Senaviratna likes or not, time bar will work because. He knows what is in the low than Dumindo or anybody else. I know what is technically in the budget than anybody else. So even if it is wrong, what we believe is what is right. So why can't we give the interpretation in six months? I mean, my view is give it in three months. Because of the volume probably may come up. We can't do it in seven days. Otherwise, I don't see logic in these things. That period is over. Now the world is different. We need clarity, so give clarity. It may not uh, make everybody happy. So that's the underlying thinking. So we will issue those clarifications very soon. My apology also for custom not disclosing whatever information that should have been available from midnight, because before we went to Parliament, we made sure all those material details are online. So online sometimes is not that much online. Uh, my only advice is you also better check whether your destinations in Jaffna, Kandy, Mathur, Hambantara, Gol are really online. 
because sometimes these things do not work. I can also remember I was telling for the John Keels Holding Management expand this building several years ago. Several years ago. And you can see this is not enough. This shows country need a bigger capacity. This capacity was created in early 80s to accommodate then a country which was strategizing to achieve 6% growth. People thought 6% growth is very high. And we were working with former Minister of Finance, Ronnie DeMel, to, to claim 6% growth. We were thrilled, you know, when we are near. And so probably private sector also manage, uh, and I don't know whether this was built by private sector also, so uh, at that time we only privatized. Uh, for six percent type of growth. Everywhere I go, I see overheating. Capacity is not enough. Capacity is not enough, not just for the future, even for today. Definitely inadequate. We need more food, more roads, more electricity, more skills, and everything else. We have even three times more tourists than we are accustomed to manage. So we need good uh, support staff to look after those. Otherwise, everywhere you see a chaos. Now, it is in that context, I hope, private sector begin to invest because Everything required for investment is there except some problem from us. But as long as we are there in governments, you have problems. It is not only here. That is the story in the United States. That's the story everywhere. That's what the role of government, to create nuisance value sometimes. <laughs> but private sector has to manage those. And this government since 2005 has created everything private sector has been demanding to resolve whichever way you didn't have any preferred choice either through peace or by giving half the country or by war oh, finish it that's what your message and this government has finished it the way they thought is right you don't have to debate over it people were demanding get the port to accommodate big ships, there's a port. Whether you like or not the way we have done, there's a port, not just for next couple of years, for the next 50 years, port facilities are there. People were, I have seen, having power crisis, long hours, we were running everywhere to see how this managed. We just have gone through a very severe drought. Victoria was just got empty. But you didn't experience power cut. You didn't pay either, of course. But we had power, uninterrupted power. That means capacity is created. We see roads and everybody who have good cars enjoy them. That's why hotels are full, not necessarily from tourists. But you have become tourists. Weekends, I mean I was surprised when the private sector made a request, don't cancel the Friday holiday when the moon was shifting. <laughs> whether it was not sure whether it's Friday or Saturday. That means you are looking for leisure. Not just you didn't have work, you can afford. Everybody is moving. Now that speed is what is 8% growth. In fact, I was doing my calculations while watching this audience and was wondering 
whether we need the upward revision. For the growth rate, we have revised at 6.8 for this year. When you look at the real growth sectors, because we are looking everything traditionally. Those numbers have no relevance. They are good only for universities, academicians, and, and the people who only have become prisoners of statistics. Because you need 10 to 20 years data to do an econometric analysis. So future is projected from the past. But if you read from the past, we cannot cross 6% growth. We cannot have single digit inflation. We cannot have downward trend in budget deficit. We cannot maintain seven, eight billion dollar reserves. We cannot have a poverty index of 8.9. We cannot have the, the debt to GDP coming down because we have become prisoners of those numbers. But the fact remains, these numbers are behaving in a very unique fashion. I myself is a, is familiar with statistics, data, and I'm daily looking at data. But I also look at what is happening. It's a different story. And that is the story that we used to structure this budget. World is in a critical stage. It's not going to collapse. But it is going through a tough time. Germany is slowing down. Does not mean Germany is going to give up. It has a policy. It has to adjust. United States need to adjust. Those adjustments will make the rest of the world adjust. New leaderships looking for these things. So, in that kind of a context, just because some short-term fluctuations happen, economies are not going to collapse. Economies will adjust. Adjustments can in different ways. It could be painful. It depends on the culture. United States simply lay off. We can't lay off. So those are political dynamics societies need to manage, but we still manage. So government also did the adjustment in this year, at the very beginning of the year, by taking certain global conditions into account and placing the country on a more flexible exchange rate regime, placing on a more higher energy cost, placing on a different transportation price structure, fuel price adjustments, motor vehicle tariff adjustments, not to get into adjustment that was demanding this nation to stabilize its operations. That is, last year we were talking $10 billion exports and $20 billion imports, twice the size of ex exports. You can't sustain. So you need operation. You need to compress it. So government has made those adjustments. People were wondering last year, by this time, will the trade deficit come down? Now NISTA is reporting trade deficit has come down. So those who are looking elasticity will never see this. Elasticity will never explain this. This has happened despite the fact countries spending one and a half billion dollars more than last year on oil imports. So see the size of adjustment this country has gone through in a matter of 10 months. That's a bold adjustment. Country is in a new exchange rate compared to 108.9. But see the other side of the story. Inflation is single digit. Inflation is single digit. It hit 9.8 in August. 
and drop back to 8.9, slowly it's stabilizing. Look, country is no longer in a food scarcity. Stability in rice price, stability in coconut price, availability on, of fruits and vegetable and other food items, shift towards import replacement investments in cement, steel, ceramics and building materials and various other activities which are picking up. The food production itself, the new wave of thinking, certain investment in sugar, dairy, not by government but by private sector as viable, our reflection growth is shifting. Growth is shifting to a new direction. It is shif shifting not because of the protection, because of the scale, because one time it is not worth putting $70 million investment on steel mill in this country because $70 million, $70, there was no $70 million steel market here. But today we are talking $400 million steel market. We are talking $400 million cement market. Over and above what we produce, these are imports. We are importing $450 million of milk powder. We are importing $450 million of sugar. No wonder, you know, everybody is having diabetes. So these are indicators that has taken place. So as far as government is concerned, the thinking behind the president was to create another wave. Don't let this momentum lost. So therefore, consolidation exercise was done. If not for the drought, I am in fact wondering what is the impact of adjustment. If not for the drought, we would have still hit 8%. We would have still hit 8%. Drought had an impact because the yala harvest is completely gone. Coconut is affected. Three, four months tea production was had some adverse impact. Whole value chain changed as a result. Instead of generating electricity from 100% value-added hydro sources, shifted to non-value-added imports, growth shifted again downwards, and associated uh, imports of heavy oil, which is also negative growth, we are with 6.8% growth. I am looking at these things in a much more comprehensive manner to see where these things are happening. Certain sectors are fully compensated or more than compensated, the expansion in tourism, both foreign and domestic, expansion in associated industries, IT, 60,000 IT guys earning over 150,000 rupee average salary is here now. So these labor market dynamics are also taking place. Above all, we have $6 billion remittance. That must be going somewhere in this country. And that's keep aggregate demand moving. So in that context, the president's vision was to take a stock and see how you give another push. And since Sri Lanka has been always pioneer in many things, we have been pioneer on education. Before, third world countries spoke of education, our nation spoke of education and health very long time ago. And we, by the time world was speaking about literacy, maternal mortality kind of indicators, we were reporting very high, top of the rank. So in that background, when the world was speaking of 
the millennium development goal we were again on the top not big challenge for us despite the conflict sri lanka was almost hitting the millennium development goal so therefore before united nations set the target for something again on the field these guys anyway will do sri lanka government has decided sri lanka will go beyond millennium development goals that's the reason because we are happy if we are happy with millennium development goals we have only one or two points which anyway will co- come through next couple of years second we took some numbers seriously numbers are we have 8.9% poverty but a different types of poverty then we have single digit inflation we have four and a half percent unemployment we have succeeded in moving in the reducing budget deficit these are probably people will debate whether adjustment is strong enough adequate but directions are there despite your expectation government has kept tax regime stable we didn't touch because we don't believe when the revenue drops taxes goes up when revenue goes up taxes coming down this won't work policies have been created to set the stage for a much more bigger drama drama of 8 plus growth drama of maintaining single digit inflation drama of creating a stability in exchange regime not by running down reserves but by maintaining stability in trade deficit and creating capital inflows rather than capital outflows so when you look at these things life is more challenging in future because we are no longer a low income country we are almost on the border of stepping into upper middle income country when we cross the 4000 dollar we are upper middle income country now we are lower middle con- income country so we are near so in those situations how do we handle this president had a special preference that he does not like to claim in 2015 or 16 that he hit the 4000 dollar per capita income status but he like to claim it is poverty free sri lanka and a country beyond million in development goal so we had to address that specific objectives so this budget occupy every single line into that aspects because it has to be a more equitable in terms of opportunities in terms of livelihoods and free of poverty is a model so that was one critical objective he make a appeal to the private sector to participate in this special poverty reduction initiative in areas where you operate it is not simply by creating jobs alone yesterday i was watching some television program about the post budget when the question was posed private sector said our responsibility as far as the poverty reduction is concerned is to create jobs no jobs related poverty is no longer there in sri lanka take plantation their poverty is not due to not having jobs for various specific facets are there there are various malnutrition problems in the country there are various other aspects of poor health condition not having proper sanitation so those aspects president is requesting 
show your corporate so- social responsibility not to organize your staff to have a beach game but to do a poverty reduction program that sort of a whole nation embracing on a very specific poverty issues that we have to deal with otherwise countries moving in that direction next question is what does this 4.5% unemployment mean to this country on the one hand labor force is quite mobile they are no longer looking at the sri lankan economy they have choices much more choices than before they are looking at construction industry they are looking at commercial agriculture agricultural research extension kind of work emerging service industry which is getting highly diversified with not simply with accountancy law medicine etc now even beauty culture and whole lot of activities related to sports economy related to tourism and whole range of activities here within plus across the world 1 million people are living outside and they have contact with their families relations and they say look there's a job in korea let's go there's a job in middle east let's go they are fantastic places don't waste don't go and work in those places that kind of a labor market dynamics are taking place here many people are migrating from certain sectors to tourism now can't help so wage rates under pressure wage rates are under pressure simply because unemployment is falling at least from the economics i know when the unemployment drop wages must go up that's a fact that is one reason we thought it guys which are moving very rapidly booming industry if you want to keep these guys they are declared income may be uh, what i have reported in the budget because if these guys to get into the system we have to get into hong kong type of taxes nobody is going to pay this 24 25 50% tax so at a point progressivity get loss in taxation at a from lower rate you can go up to point after that people think ha huh, now it is 16 17% why should i pay this guy who is malika to get my money my hard earned money so let's have reasonable share of cost of government to taxpayer that's the theory it sometimes it's difficult to maintain but if you create that stability those countries which have remarkably grown are the ones you maintain something and that's the logic in uh, those so therefore government while doing all these various changes recognize the need for next wave of education reform that is in early 40s we thought giving free education creating more access is what is needed so everybody become literate but today budget speech is interpreting literacy not in that context but the literacy in computer it literacy literacy in languages because english itself is not going to get enough because china is growing new leadership may create a new wave shifting to rather than looking all the time east he may look west and the west guys may look east so east guys will learn chinese and chinese guy will learn english and we have to learn therefore both plus the countries in between speak all types of languages so god only knows the language we have to learn the time we grew if you know reasonable english you can survive now it won't work so therefore skills in every aspects mathematics science technology all subjects 
he has set the target of reaching 80% literacy not in capacity to read newspapers won't work because those places they don't read newspapers actually that is one reason those countries are growing <laughs> that one reason they are growing because they have papers of nista kasim style go to singapore every paper is full of economics full of economics so you need to transform education then 150000 students sit a level 20000 goes to universities this year maybe another 5000 more next year still we don't know where to put them but the balance 120000 go nowhere so you need to create space in education for these guys not to label as dropouts they are labeled here differently i will not use that terminology so country need new space and that's why vocational colleges universities giving these opportunities not necessarily university itself is a university and then similarly university itself creating more space because at the end skills are required to replace labor 1977 when the government opened we were asked to look at the unemployment numbers cheap labor and more people today all those labor intensive industries are looking automated operations only some gadgets here and there with uh, even this computer is outdated frankly because revolution that is taking place through information technology has taken 40 50% of factory management into a small ipad it may be different tomorrow so therefore skills technology is very crucial and also we were encourage research is now used by private sector technology now used by private sector no longer for balance sheet management but to improve productivity because without research they can't survive the reason we government decided to extend triple deduction on research is private sector now need to do research otherwise their product won't see the market and we have seen such a dramatic growth in research in agriculture research in animal husbandry research in dairy poultry spices i mean amazing tea rubber rubber is probably next year is higher than tea if there are tea guys here must revisit growth is not enough cinnamon may take or both because they are preserving sri lankan cinnamon apparently not available anywhere in the world now somebody better claim it and initiative has already taken to take that step manufacturing whole range of new products are coming up so in that context government thought this budget must spend recognize design policies to deepen the policies towards education skills and technology research direction then it is equally important to create food security our nation at least until last year was a recipient aid recipient whenever some somebody offered rice we take it whenever somebody offered flower we take it we create a case also drought floods conflict name anything 
Some people are specialists in this. There are missions coming from those countries also to assess our need of food. And we grab. But now we are shifting. We are at least have become donor to two nations. We are providing grants to Maldives. We are extending grants to Uganda. And we are also becoming a supplier to World Food Program. So don't worry, straight away producing the lone grain rice. Make something. Because there are still people starving. They are not looking for quality. They just need something, some rice. And if we can meet World Food Program rice quality, you are an exporter. So, and then taste the market and get those fellows custom to our rice. Everybody won't eat our rice after all. And there is no point in we trying to produce what Americans are producing in America. That can't produce here. So we produce something here and get our product registered, get the taste registered, and get the value registered into these products. And that is the direction. I was very encouraged when CIC sponsored a food technology a workshop, international workshop, explaining various varieties of rice and other agricultural crops that they have developed and promoting international markets. So this is how this research and related sectors came up. Then the infrastructure. Infrastructure issue is very vital. Country need to continue in this direction. We have the government has committed for 6% of GDP as public investment. There is a continuous effort to expand the infrastructure network. Government has conditioned people to toll roads, expressways. Hopefully next year people see more value addition in the expressway when the, the airport expressway is open and connect to the southern expressway. But we can't continue to build airport expressways on our own. So therefore we are promoting the next expressway to the north, connecting what Duminda and Asita is trying to connect through online, to connect Candy Kurunagala. So between the two cities there will be, connect to the Dambulla intersection, one goes to Trinko, one goes to Jaffna. And those are our growth centers connecting also the south, Gol, Matara, Hambadur. So that growth centers, look at those growth centers. They are all connected to ports, global. If the road network works well, they are connected to two international airports. The ports are not just place to harbor ships, but also places to promote port city based industries. So we, not, we need not to bring those industries to the countryside. Those are also places where our tourist hubs are located. All the tourist locations are there. So we have map this entire infrastructure strategy, though many people think government doesn't have a plan, read the budget. First five years there's a plan, second five years there's a plan, and only thing you all don't read. You all don't look at the map. But otherwise, this entirety, what President has described, is connecting growth centers. Look at the irrigation map. Water is taken up to Jaffna. The diversion of Moragahakanda scheme is a mechanism to divert water to Iranamadu, which will pump water to Jaffna water supply scheme. Only second to Kalambu water supply scheme. That's what it is. So water is moving there. Uma, I bring water to Ruhunapura water supply scheme. 
So these investment must happen because otherwise you have rain, water flows down to the sea and you ask somebody to send food because we have drought here. But instead you create water, food, environment, security and then build up this country on a different platform. Now, what is important here, however, is capital. We need capital. We need capital in every way. Government is providing this 6% GDP for this kind of uh, investment, but private sector has to do. You have to raise investment. And investment opportunities are there, but you need money. So restrictions on capital formation has to move out. What's the problem? If you can raise money showing your balance sheet, why should the exchange control ask question? Because your balance sheet is looked at by some other guy who accepts this is a super balance sheet, I must put my money. What's your problem? What's the problem? Lender and the borrower willing to share the risk. And this country has now developed capacity for such borrowing. We have enormously rich in terms of their balance sheets to go to the international market and raise money. And these are not big money after all. There are small funds looking for this sort of investment and our exports have good, good markets, good values. That is why despite United States slowdown, despite the collapse in Europe, apparently it's not doing bad. Their margins are less, but their quantity volumes have not seen dramatic drop. That is in spite of not having GSP. In fact, it's good that they don't have GSP, in my view, because this adjustment must happen. What is the point you are doing a business which is subsidized here, subsidized there. When both countries remove subsidy, you are in trouble. Countries need to move away from it. That is why we don't prefer tax holidays any longer. Actually, if not for the continuity that government has committed, I would have advised to withdraw altogether. Because I can understand not having taxes on tax during the stage of construction. You don't need to tax through PAL, NBT, VAT, custom duty, CES, whatever other things at the time of importing or buying from here when you are doing investment. But once you do your investment and after having the period for a, for a some kind of a, a grace period, then you start making money and why can't you pay 12%? What's the problem? Why you need 10 year holiday from 12% how much you can save? So, instead of this tax holiday concept which BOI is so fond of, sadly, Instead of providing good service, give the approval day one. Provide all the logistic support day one. Clear all the barriers from municipal councils and forestry and whatever agencies around. Clear those instead of giving the wrong instrument. Because country won't grow. I can't see what is the interpretation problem the BUI has when Duminda said. They have signed some contract and old tax regime. Now the tax regime is this. So shift him for that. What's the problem? Straight away shift to new regime. What's the problem of allowing BOI guys to sell here when our guys go and import the same stuff from somewhere else? This is a mindset change country need. And that's what this budget has done. Permitting the BOI products being sell here, subject to the payment of VAT and NBT, rather than allowing the same products 
imported from Singapore, China and various, Indonesia and various other places and they don't pay tax either. And they are all flooded. Go and see all these shops. From where are they coming? Why can't these factories supply direct? If we are talking import substitution, import replacement, that's the import replacement. And you create, you flood the market and instead of money moving out, money will come in. But the otherwise tourists come here, stay in Cinnamon Grand, go to Singapore, buy a shirt. So where does the value addition? In Singapore. That's what we need now. And that's what the reforms have taken place there. That's one. Second, the government has also created the space for banks to look out rather than our banks going to villages, taking the, the jewelry from the, from this customers, give a loan kind of banking will not bring 8% growth, believe me. Or going to farmers and take their money during the harvest and keeping deposits and 25 banks competing for the same farmer won't grow. Banks must also go global. They must go and raise money, show the balance sheets. If the commercial bank is the strongest bank in the world, show it not here in the rest of the world. Hatton National Bank, Sampath Bank, all these banks are, are now bankers alone all the time can't be the banker to the nation. Other banks must come in. Therefore, we have the government had the courage to say, don't come to exchange control hereafter. Go and raise 50 million dollars each, what's the problem? 10 million dollars for small exporters, what's the problem? Because you all are telling no, you all are exporters. If you are exporters, talk to your suppliers and get this market network. Similarly, if you have a problem of listing, family doesn't permit, government doesn't permit. Both are families, no after all. Both are families, because this is also need to represent the interest. So government is a custodian of people. People don't like privatization. So government has to look at that interest, if it is the will of the people. People also, some people don't believe in listing. Why should I go and answer? So these issues have to be resolved over time. But that does not mean you can't use capital market. Go and do a listing of your debentures, listing of your debt. At the end, the debt market anyway bigger than the equity market. That's the hard reality. To the extent people save, somebody must borrow. Everybody is telling government should not borrow. Imagine for some luck government decide, yes, this is too much, we will pay all. Because some people are comparing all our 50 year debt the shortest is now 10 years as far as foreign debt is concerned. That in relation to DD GDP is only 80%. From that take, domestic is the biggest. Imagine we pay all money to EPF tomorrow morning. What is EPF going to do? Where are they going to put this money? On some instrument. So these are all irrelevant arguments. What matters is the sustainability in the market, sustainability in capital formation. So therefore, it is very important that the deepening of the debenture market through listing as a part of capital formation. We are also encouraging those who don't believe at least if they believe in lower taxes, and at least if they desire to see least lower taxes in this country, because many activities have come to good, decent, low tax rate now. 
agriculture is 10 percent. From the from this budget, even poultry, livestock type of things will be treated equally. Rest of the investment businesses are all at 12 percent. Construction, tourism, exports, SMEs, all 12 percent. Only domestic manufacturing and traditional TX type of traditional exports at 28% now. So if they want 14%, what should they do? Go and list. Go and list. We have reduced. Half tax rate means that. Only thing is you have to keep a 20% public float. You can do public float. So CPC CEO is here. He can now need not to turn all the time to me. Issue a listed debenture. But he has to tell a good story. He has to tell a good story. He must say, all of you all are getting so much subsidy from me. He is giving 12 rupees for every diesel that you is per litre. He must say it. Electricity board must come and tell the factory owners, are you going to subscribe my debenture or going to pay 20 percent higher than now? That's how market works, the market that I know. Then we both, it's a win-win situation. Now the entire strain is on the budget, so we are shifting that burden little by little to increase the capital formation, a space for capital. Water board has 47 percent of water is called non-revenue because we don't know from where it flows. <laughs> water, we are on, we have, we, we, there's huge water underneath because some during British time or even before that probably uh, there are water uh, pipelines laid in all over Colombo and suburb. Nobody has replaced the so water is going all the way. We have raised 200 million dollars long-term loan from Asian Development Bank because we don't want them to give us water project for this place, that place, that we can do. What we need is to put this money and stop this bleeding. And that will bring down the non-revenue water. Apparently there will be some non-revenue water because public places and all. Technically we are, we should have non-revenue water around 12% but we are bringing it down to 17% by 2015, which means water board has a good cash cow. Why can't they go and raise a good capital without any longer coming to the treasure? So these reforms have also behind this. Road Development Authority is shifting to a new expressway with private sector exactly the way port did. So investment opportunities are there. The president has asked the local construction industry form a consortium rather than individually trying to do roads, this road you can't do like that. Get the top players, form a consortium, raise at least three, four hundred million dollars, a sections will be available to you. It's in the budget. So construction industry, rather than now tendering for 20 kilometer roads, rehabilitation now must get ready. Because foreign investors will also come. So section will be there. Government is ready to do the entire Colombo, Trinco, North sections in three stages, but simultaneously. Three segments simultaneously. So these investment opportunities have been created. Look at the fiscal reforms. We are, government has set this direction in the budget deficit to a 4.5% uh, deficit by 2015. But next year, it will be 5.8, half a percent, 0.5% uh, 5, 5 reduction. Maybe not enough. For some economies, this is not enough. You should move away from deficit. We don't believe in it. Because we have some cheap money available. 
funds available long term from World Bank, ADP, bilateral donors, 20 year credit at no cost sometimes should be used. There's no problem with that as long as the project is good. Every project government has done justify that projects. So that's kind of investment is protected while preserving the reduction in deficit which is financiable. At the same time government is getting other layers of government also to reform. We made a major reform by combining the nation building tax and the provincial turnover tax last year. Very nicely revenue sharing arrangement is working. Very well it's working. Now we are asking have single fee or levy or whatever you like to call for provincial local authority. But in supporting that and also to increase the, the transformation required in major cities, 12 municipal council has been given an opportunity to raise municipal, uh, raise capital through the issuance of municipal bonds subject to a limit of 500 million rupees each year but five times of the municipal budget surplus not deficit financing so show the reforms in the budget of the municipal council so you have to look at municipal expenditure municipal revenue establish a good rating for the municipal council from so rating companies have some work and then bankers capital market developers Everybody can work with them to project raising 500 million rupees is peanuts for Colombo Municipal Council. Five million dollars, not even five million dollars. All these expatriates, everybody who are looking for this sort of good investment. But for that, they also have to do certain reforms, creating investment climate in municipal areas. Because those are very relevant. Doing business won't work only by government doing cleaning up in business environment. Every layer has to happen this. And that has been created. Take our two DFIs. Two DFIs, that is DFCC, the oldest national development bank, which came as a development bank in 1978. What did they do in that time? They were, while commercial banks were doing commercial banking, they did development banking, long-term lending and support. Of course, that time it's pretty easy. Government organized a loan from World Bank or some other place, and we on lend to these guys, then they lend. But that kind of capital is no longer enough for us now. We need plantation 20-year credit, 10-year credit, because it requires long-term funds. Construction industry require long-term funds. Property development require long-term funds. Manufacturing modernization require long-term funds, not just short-term overdraft. So therefore, we thought it is sensible these two blue chips, because balance sheets are superb. NDB claim that their NPL is some 3%. That means they either they don't lend <laughs> or, they, uh, or they lend to absolutely secure customer or their balance sheet is superb. I believe it is superb. Similarly, DFCC. What's the problem of expanding a little bit, take a little bit risk? So therefore, we have earmark. 250 million dollar each for them to take their balance sheets and tell a story to the rest of the world capital market financial market look this is our portfolio in Sri Lanka this is the corporate profile that we come on like ENY is doing here bring your corporate customers and give them market them and raise money so we hope either two together Two together may be better because economies of scale is much larger. 
own separately depending on their uh, preference and bring this money to the country and led to a much needed investment in plantation companies because they are not investing. We have privatized. We thought they will do better than JDB, SLPCC. That some are not doing better. Some are not doing better. Some are doing extremely well. Value chain, they have done well. So those guys should be rewarded. Other guys should be reminded, look, changes are required. Capital formation has to be on that direction. So that issue itself has been addressed in this budget. They will, I hope they will grab this opportunity. Central Bank is ready to facilitate this entire process because we will not borrow. Government will not borrow this year, 2013, in the capital market. We will provide guarantees. Now we have graduated because we have $3 million solid 10-year bonds in the market with good rates for Sri Lanka government international bonds. But you bring money now. If you want to temporarily give, invest that money in rupees, Sri Lanka rupee bonds, treasury bills are available in the market. We take through that. Tax has been removed on those kind of debt tracing. We have also thought when the 2011 budget reforms were introduced, banks will have a vehicle to promote investment banking. So we created investment fund accounts for each bank to transfer their savings from income tax savings from almost 37% to 28% and financial VAT from 20% to 12%, that difference, to an investment fund account. Some have lent some money to construction activities. Some have simply put the money on treasury bills. That's not the purpose. First year we were, we didn't want because you can't just invest, you need to prepare good projects, identify good customers. Now, when we took this and showed the results to president, he said, give them notice. If they don't lend this money, for investment purpose before 30th June 2013, Treasury also need money. Look first for easy ones. My, my approach always is first look easy ones. This is one easy one. Because the purpose was them to have their tax rate was reduced for that particular lending. SME lending is 24%. They were requested to open branches in districts. Bank of Ceylon has opened only five. People's Bank has opened only four, five. One branch for districts. These were not, we didn't want simply a branch for SME. We want investment bankers in that branch. That's the message. That's the message. So, because country is looking for this kind of money. You can't do agriculture, you can't do uh, poultry, you can't do all these things. We are asking them to export. How do you do this without money? So that has also been created. We also thought these investment banks must experiment, learn venture capital business. So therefore, we have identified less risk category called women. And women entrepreneurs are supposed to be good for microfinancing, SMEs, etc. So 25 women entrepreneurs in each district to have venture capital contribution up to 10 million rupees 
from next year. And that money must go from there and I will write to the Commissioner General in the revenue and to the Governor Central Bank to make required amendment in their circulars requiring this and the law will also be amended. So these aspects have been addressed very clearly and the, the government believe like in many other vibrant economies, SMEs must be a vibrant sector here and this is a SME economy. Models like Germany and all speak quite well for SME driven high value creation economy and therefore enormous amount of facilities have been created. Vision of the president is at least keep trouble free SME. I mean BOI is very keen to keep trouble free foreign investors. We are happy to keep trouble free SMEs in this country. So therefore anybody having threshold less than 10 million rupees will not pay VAT, NBT etc. and they don't see income tax department. Hopefully they will still go. Even to avoid that, we have raised the threshold for those guys whose taxes cannot be questioned during conflict and all, also to see this sector is free. Let them grow first and enter this. And SMA definition itself for taxation has been revised to 500 million rupees, so quite a large segments will be eligible to this sort of regime. And as far as the taxation is concerned, I'm winding up. The objective is to concentrate you guys. Corporate world, large taxpayer file. Commissioner General has already, she has told me that they have taken action to combine the corporate division and the large taxpayer units together and manage better because you guys have experts like ENY, we have our experts so they can manage big people. Small guys, no problem. They must operate free of anybody. That's the entrepreneurship economy. This is more corporate wise, you also don't know what your CEOs and other guys are doing. We also don't know what these guys are doing. I did not know custom has not done what uh, president wants to do. These things happen in business world. That's why America has collapsed. Because they did not know what their CEOs and the CFOs and all were doing. So system collapsed. So in that context, corporate large taxpayer unit will be strengthened quite a number of good taxpayers are there. They generate 95% of our revenue, NBT, VAT, corporate taxes, everything. Department will engage in much more, at least 30% in my view. Now they are not doing much decent uh, tax audit. They must move on to that. Give faster interpretation because when these nuisance files disappear, they should be able to give quick interpretation. Ratna will retire, one of the two. One of the two, because sometimes they tell, no, no, get the interpretation from ST. I know nothing about taxes. <laughs> I know nothing about taxes. Sometimes they tell, files are on my table. I never keep any files on my table as a habit, because I like to have a clean table. So they will do that. Tax Appeal Commission will be strengthened. I like to have time bound every matter, because if we can't work, in response to time, because present world is nothing but sensitive to time, because it's fast moving very rapidly, very rapidly. And we have to keep that pace in order to keep the efficiency in our system. And that's the direction as far as the tax reforms are concerned. But I can assure you the tax system will not compromise for short term gains. Otherwise, we could have done this during the middle of this year when we were pressed for revenue. But our idea was, you know, to do time slicing for expenditure management, be more cautious, delay new projects, 
commencement for a little later kind of things and we thought our commitment to keep the 6.2 percent deficit will be maintained rather than doing ad hoc changes and that message and that uh, theory philosophy has worked for the country and that is probably why all of you all are speaking so positively about this budget and thank you very much for everybody <laughs>